Okay, everybody, so this is my um, update for Maze Quest, the um, uh, Unity Engine version, which is going to be, we're going to make a build for um, PC and iPhone, for sure, those two platforms. Uh, we don't know about other platforms at this point, because, you know, sometimes, um, even if you, even if you're using a thing like Unity, supporting, like, all different, a bunch of different platforms makes a lot of extra work, and um, we're not sure exactly how far we're going to go with the, you know, multi-platform support. But um, in any case, definitely PC and definitely the iPhone. Um, and uh, I, probably iPad. Um, this is, um, this does have music right now. But I'm going to turn it off just so I can, you know, you can hear me talk a little bit better. And... Um, I'm just going to pick, you know, whatever here. Basically, the new thing about this version is the battle mode. And um, pretty much that's it. I've been working on the battle mode, getting that ready for quite a while now. It's um, I just recently got uh, this working, if you can see, you know, the computer now, um, it makes moves now, basically. Um, it auto moves. Uh, it only does, you know, it, it basically just makes a list of the moves it can do, and it just randomly picks one. That's all it does right now. So, but, you know, the, the big thing was me getting it to actually do things like, um, you know, basic, basically look like it was moving. So, you know, it, it, um, the little cursor, the little, uh, I call it the hex lens. Oh, that guy attacked me. The little hex lens, you know, moves from unit to unit depending on whose turn it is. And if the cats cast a spell, you know, you have a little animation of it moving to the hex and targeting the hex and this is this kind of stuff. But uh, it basically, it doesn't, maybe it doesn't look like much, but it, it certainly took a while. And I'm pretty proud of how it looks, actually. Uh, it's kind of, um, it's based on, there's a couple of strategy games for the Sega Genesis that I used to play. Um, and, uh, you know, one, one of them was Shining Force 2, and it had that little effect of, like, uh, you know, it'd move a cursor back and forth, or a, um, like, a little uh, uh, encasement for the, um, the squares, you know, that it'd move back and forth depending on whose turn it was. And, you know, if they were casting a spell, it'd go out and it it uh, you know throw out the uh, you know the little um, like the little square you know kind of like kind of like I'm doing here a little bit so that's kind of where I got the uh, the inspiration for this this type of look but I think it makes uh, it adds a lot to like the feel of the game um, and you know there's there's a lot you can do in in, in terms of just the way you um, you make the interface that can can make your game look a whole lot better and uh, it took me a little while to get this this working but I I really do think that it added a lot having you know this little this little hex encasement here move back and forth you know indicating whose turn it was it was before um, before this you know when you when you got someone's turn it just automatically appeared you know at, at that spot that where they were just you warp there instantly and I thought that didn't really give you enough of a feel for like the size of the battlefield or you know for the actual location that this you know whoever it was was in now you can kind of see you know where they are on the battlefield because it scrolls over to them and uh, you know just kind of gives you a feel for you know uh, just the general coordinates of, of who's moving um, anyway, um, yeah, maybe not, uh, maybe not extremely impressive, but you know, as you can see, we're getting there. And I'll definitely keep, keep, uh, everybody updated, um, on my channel as to, you know, how far we are and, you know, when everything's going to be available. It's, you know, we don't have a long ways to go because we, we are, um, we have a lot of content from the old version that we can port over, so it's not it's not as bad as making everything from scratch like it was the first time. But um, you know, it's still we still got a ways to go. We still got a lot to do.
not as lot not not as much as we did have though so that's the good news um anyway so next after this is the ai um like i said right now the ai just consists of making a big list of all the moves it can possibly make and then just chooses one of those moves at random uh what i've got to do is i've got to um i've got to make um uh, uh, the part of the engine that actually calculates the numbers like uh, you know the damage done for say you know me t attacking that guy or me using a certain spell against that guy and uh, then once i have those numbers then we can actually you know start assigning values to each of those moves and uh, basically um you just take take that big list of moves and you know give all those all those moves values and then once you have all the values, uh, you can just compare them to each other and say, okay, which is the best move based on which gives me the highest value. Um, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but uh, you know, essentially, it doesn't it doesn't take a whole lot of time um, if you're just doing competent, but at the same time, fairly simple AI. Um, also, maybe I should go into some some depth about the spell here the spell system is a little bit unique it's it's kind of based on and, and a lot of stuff in this game are kind of based on my experience with the rpgs and you know what could i what could i do better you know how could i improve a lot of the flaws or not improve the flaws but uh, fix a lot of the flaws that i've i've seen in these games and basically uh these this says abilities these are basically spells right this character here, um, he has in his skill list, he has fire and purify. These are essentially spells, right? Fire is a damage spell. Purify is basically a healing spell. Um, but he has it. Uh, he has fire at level six, as you can see there, and purify at level six. And what happens is, when you want to cast a spell, you click on that little spell book there. And it brings up a list of the abilities, quote unquote, or, or spells, or that you can use um, at this particular time. Um, this little this little icon right here that you can click on and off that is um, that disables or enables this particular spell for the AI if you if you hit the AI button. Um, but anyway, um, M is the magic cost or base magic cost, S is the base stamina cost, and you can see this little number right here, it's a six, that means, you know, I, I have this at level six. Um, ignore the icon there, that's a placeholder. But anyway, uh, fire, okay, hits one target with fire damage. Well, actually, it depends on what level you cast it, and I can cast it at level three, and the level that you can cast it is, um, you know, a base of one. You can always cast it at level one as long as you have uh, at least one in that in that skill. But for every three more levels you have, you can cast it at a higher level. So uh, if I have three in the skill, I can cast it at level two. If I have uh, six in the skill, like I do, I can cast it at the max of level three. Um, and at each level that you cast it at, at each higher level, you get a little bit more power um, the power growth depends on the actual spell itself. Uh, you get you can um, you get more range, and again the range growth depends on the spell itself. Uh, you get more area of effect, and uh, again that depends on the spell itself. Um, but it costs more stamina and magic, so it gets more expensive to cast the higher level it is. So if we cast it, if we cast it at level one, we have one power, two range, one area, one stamina, and two magic. Those are the costs. Um, so it looks like this. So you can see right there, it's a two range spell when I cast it at level one right here. So two range in this case, it means uh, you, if you count the center square or a center hex, it's one and then one out from that. So that's a two range. So in other words, if this guy, this guy was right here, then I could actually reach him with this spell. But 
as it is right now, he's out of range because fire at level one is, is very short range. So, and it doesn't have a big area of effect. It only, um, the area of effect at level one is only one hex. So, so there's no one that I can actually target with this spell except myself, which wouldn't be a good idea because it's a damage spell. Um, but if I cast it at level two, then all of a sudden the range is increased by one. So now I can get this guy if I want to. And I could cast it, but actually casting at this point uh, will, will not do anything because nothing's nothing's plugged in. But uh, anyway, this is just, uh, you know, it's just a demonstration of, you know, the range and, and all that. So, yeah, so anyone in this range here I could get, or anyone in, in one hex here in, in this range. Um, but... If I cast a level three, now the area of effect is two. The range also has increased, but now the area of effect has increased as well. So now uh, the area of effect is actually seven hexes instead of just one. So if there were like two enemies right here, I could get both of them if they were, you know, within this, this area right here. And that's how spells work in this game, um, or at least as planned right now. Okay, so anyway, and uh, like I said, um, the computer now moves, you know, by itself. It has, it has the animations hooked up to where it can, you know, cast spells, and you can kind of see what it's doing. Yeah, I like. I, I think it's a, uh, you know, the the whole idea of making it like this was so it would be. Um, explanatory so you could see when the enemy moves you could see exactly what it's doing it wouldn't be a mystery as to what it actually did you know you could see it moving and attacking or you can see it attacking or you can see it casting a spell and it gives you enough time to actually take a look at what it's doing too all right so so far that's where we are and I'll definitely I'll definitely keep um, now and then I'll keep throwing uh, updates on my channel and wherever else the Facebook page, so um, so everybody that's interested in following the project can can you know know where I am and maybe how how long till release. At this point, I'd say I don't know. We're we're maybe like you know still two months away at least. Um, hopefully, not much more than that though. Um, I'll keep you guys updated. And uh, okay, till next video.